Today's topic is the higher carbon phase diagram system. Here we try to understand the details for the phase transformation, specifically for higher carbon phase diagram, where we consider the transition from gamma phase austenite, which is a single phase FCC structure, to thermotide plus ferrite, which is a two phase structure. How about the detailed transitions inside? We understand the phase transformation depends on the time and temperature. So when we modify the processing condition, either time or temperature, or both, can we get different structure or link with different properties? One thing we try to emphasize here is can we get the structure, which is no equilibrium structure. Is this structure better in terms of the mechanical properties? That's the question we try to answer in this lecture. This figure, I a carbon phase diagram, maybe is uh, one of the most important phase diagram in metal materials, at least. So here, talking about temperature change, here is the carbon concentration. High temperature is the austenite single phase structure. And this is the position you will have the transition with minimum temperature from gamma phase to alpha plus thermotite. Two phase structure. You may notice here we mark as TC alpha as well. This is another phase transition link with the ferromagnetic properties inside or ferromagnetic order inside. This phase diagram is very important for engineering application based on higher carbon alloys. However, this is not the real phase diagram if we consider the thermodynamics based on the final thermally stabilized structure. Because thermotite Fe3C is not the thermally stabilized <coughs> structure. And uh, Fe3C is the metastable meta compound. If you have the proper condition, including time and the temperature, Fe3C will transfer to ferrite plus graphite. Graphite is the final stable structure. Specifically, if you have the additional silica inside based on slow cooling, you have more opportunity to get the final structure based on graphite and not based on cementite. That's why here we show you the higher carbon true equilibrium phase diagram. You may notice this side here we mark as carbon, but we say the final structure is alpha plus graphite. To be clear, for engineering application, the most important phase diagram, at least for steels, we still focus on the higher carbon phase diagram and we talk about the thermotide, not graphite. So in this phase diagram, as we discussed before, so here is the temperature, this is the concentration carbon, concentration of carbon change. We focus on this point. Because this is the typical composition for steels. So you can say gamma phase is a solid state, solid state, solid phase. So gamma can transfer to alpha plus cementite as long as the processing temperature is below 
727 degrees C. So this is the reaction. Gamma transferred to alpha plus cementite. Clearly, gamma phase, alpha, and cementite, cementite all have different carbon concentration. To enable this transition become possible, we need to make sure the delta T is not zero. So basically, the processing temperature must be below 727 degrees C. This transition from austenite to pearlite, which including cementite and ferrite, always involve diffusion of carbon, carbon atoms. In this figure, you can say gamma phase is the starting position. They transfer to alpha plus cementite, multilayer structure. This transformation involves the carbon diffusion because alpha phase has less carbon Cementite has more carbon concentration in terms of carbon concentration, more carbon inside. So during the transition from gamma to pearlite, which including cementite and ferrite, you may notice the carbon atoms will diffusion from the position near alpha phase to the position near cementite. This transformation also linked with delta T. As we discussed before, we must make sure the delta T is not zero to make the transformation become possible. Again, I emphasize the possible only, possibility only, because this match the thermodynamics condition. For any transition, we need to consider thermodynamics and the kinetics. So let's say the Process and temperature are either 675, 650, or 600 degrees C. Clearly, higher process temperature, which means the delta T is smaller. And the lower temperature for processing, you have the large value for delta T, higher driver force. Then this curve talking about the how quick you can start the reaction and finish the react, finish the transition from um, gamma phase to pearlite. We have the smaller value for delta T, the transformation from gamma phase to, to pearlite, which including cementite and ferrite, take a longer time to start, take a longer time to completely finish. If you have the lower processing temperature, which link with the higher delta T, then the reaction can start earlier, also can be completed earlier as well, in terms of time. Then in terms of the final structure, so if you have the <coughs> uh, final uh, large green size, which is what you need, then you need a higher temperature for processing. Then finally the material is relatively soft in terms of mechanical property. If you try to get the smaller grain size structure for pearlite, again, pearlite including two phase, alpha plus cementite. You need to pick up lower temperature for processing, which link with higher delta T. Then you get the relatively hard properties in terms of mechanical property, because the smaller grain size, more green boundaries. Green boundaries are barriers for dislocation to move. Here we try to emphasize one topic called time temperature transformation diagram, TTT diagram. So this is the figure we already discussed briefly. So let's say we pick up the transformation temperature 675. Or you can say this is the processing temperature 675, which is below 727. So now you have the clear driver force, delta T. Delta T in this case is 727 minus 675. Then in this figure, you can say this direction talking about the percentage of the transformed gamma phase. Then <coughs> this direction tell you about the time during the phase transformation. 
So here is the starting position, here is the position you finish the transition. So link with the figure on the top, now we get the figure on the bottom. That's the temperature, that's the time. So this green curve, talking about at this specific processing temperature, 675. This is the starting position for the transformation. Then the black curve position show you when you have 50% of materials in gamma phase transfer to pearlite. That's what you need in terms of time. Red curve talking about the transformation from gamma phase to pearlite completely finished. Then this is the this is the time you need. Clearly, if you further decrease the temperature for processing, you get the higher delta T, higher driver force. You have the possibility to start and uh, complete the transformation quicker in short time. So if we talk about the structure change, you can say beginning the structure is the austenite. Now we have the processing temperature 625. So before this position, green curve, you have the gamma phase only. Then when you go to this black curve position, you have this multi-layer structure produced. This multi-layer is a pale light, including alpha plus semantite. Then when the time goes to the position at red curve, based on this specific processing temperature, 625 degrees C. You can see the area all are covered by pearlite. light. That's the transition. That's the point for the transition completely finish from alpha phase to pearlite light at 625 degrees C. Again, during this transition, clearly we have a driver for delta T. Delta T in this case is 727 minus 625 degrees C. So now let's talk about other compositions. So if we say the composition now is on the left side of point O, so we start from this point C, let's say. Clearly, this is the region we only have gamma phase available. Now, when we go to this point D, we know there will be two phase region, including gamma and alpha phase, based on the basic knowledge of phase diagram. And clearly, in this figure, you can find this small point or small greens, which are alpha phase material produced along green boundary. This also directly link with our previous discussion, heterogeneous nucleation along green boundary is easy to uh, have the transformation in terms of nucleation. Further decrease the temperature, this green boundary region, new phase cover more area. When you further decrease the temperature to point F, you can find that you have this gamma phase region now covered by this pale light. Similar story, if we talk about the transformation for, for this point Z, start at G, everywhere is only gamma phase. Then we go to point H, in this phase diagram, this is the region for two phase, gamma plus semantite, Fe3C, or Fe3 carbon. So clearly, the Fe3 carbon also produced along green boundaries to minimize the free energy. <clears throat> then when you further decrease temperature, finally the gamma phase in this figure will be also transferred to pearlite light structure. Then all the transformation will be completed. Pearlite is another structure in higher carbon phase diagram, obviously in higher cementite phase transformations. So, 
either <coughs> pure light or bainite have the two phase, alpha phase plus cementite, but their microstructure are different. Here the bainite, they have the longer cementite particles in alpha phase matrix. So this is the typical microstructure. Clearly, like the pure light, this transformation from austenite gamma phase to either pure light or bainite both involve diffusion of carbons, <coughs> the carbon atoms. You may notice here, this is the region with the austenite. Okay, so basically when you pick up the processing temperature below Te, then you have the possibility to start the phase transition from austenite gamma phase to either pure light or bainite, depending on the processing temperature. So higher temperature above this north position, you have more chance to get the pure light. Below this point, temperature roughly about 550 degrees C, you will get bainite with more opportunity. This shape for this TTT curve, we also discussed why we have this minimal time here, a quick transformation in terms of time here. Reason is, depend on the delta T. Higher value for delta T, you have the more driver force from thermodynamics. So you get the transition quicker. But if you have the very low value for temperature, very low temperature, so this part, the reaction getting small because getting slow. The reaction getting slow, reason is diffusion are in control because the diffusivity getting smaller, diffusivity value getting smaller. That's why the transformation rate getting slow if the process temperature is very low in this figure. Spherodite is another microstructure in iron and uh, Fe3 carbon system. So basically, again, there are two phases in the system, ferrite, alpha phase plus cementite. But now the shape of the uh, cementite become like uh, particles. And the driver force to get this uh, spherodite is due to the reduction of the interface area between alpha, ferrite, and also cementite structure. To get this, why well, you need the uh, annealing the materials from either pure light or bainite structure at a relatively higher temperature. Of course, below the Te temperature, you will get this microstructure. Martensite is a special structure in iron and cementite system. So basically, <coughs> This is a structure we call no equilibrium structure. The gamma phase we know is a single phase FCC structure. Martensite is also a single phase structure, tetragonal structure. So roughly we can say this is the structure for the martensite. And this corner atoms all are from I. Cross position are for carbons, but not all the cross positions are occupied carbon atoms, only some of them. We check the same phase di uh, same TTT curve or diagram. You can say this, as we discussed before, so there's a north skier and uh, this region we call austenite. Here, pearlite, here, bainite. All this transformation from austenite to pearlite all from austenite to bainite involve carbon diffusion. If we have the very high colony rate for processing, then we will avoid this curve. Then what we get is from austenite to martensite plus some left austenite. Okay, so this line tells you above this temperature, we will not get any martensite. This curve talking about uh, the position, you can get uh, the 50% of the austenite.
transferred. This talking about the 90 percentage of the ostomite will transfer to martensite. Martensite structure is a needle shape here, and they normally mix with the ostomite, which is left during the transition. One thing is to emphasize here, so gamma phase, which is the austenite, to martensite transition is very, very rapid. This transformation, during this transformation, there's no diffusion. So this transformation is diffusionless. And uh, this transition only depends on the temperature. Okay, so very high uh, cooling rate, low temperature processing. That's why we need a rapid cooling. You can get this uh, transition completed in seconds or less than one second time. For Martin side formation, which is from gamma phase FCC structure based on super high cooling rate, then you get the single phase structure, Martin side structure, tetragonal structure. This structure normally is a very brittle, uh, very high hardness. For age neural plication, and normally people do the further processing we call uh, annealing. Then you can get the alpha phase plus very small sized cementite to little bit decrease the hardness but dramatically increase the ductility. And gamma phase, as we discussed before, can based on slow cooling to produce the bainite or pearlite. They will have the much better ductility compared to martensite. The reason for martensite has the higher hardness brittle is because this system has the very few slip planes. When we talk about the annealing or tempering processing for martensite structure. So you just keep the materials, go to high temperature, then you will decrease the hardness and increase the ductility. When we talk about the different materials in terms of the composition change, sometimes you may find the hardness decrease, then going up again. For example, for this composition, including carbon and MO, the reason for this hardness going up again is due to the new particles are produced during the processing. Specifically, particles in this system is uh, carbides, MO2C. These particles were produced during the transition here, and these particles work as barriers to block this location to move. That's why the hardness of the material getting higher again during this processing. For this case, we call this as the secondary hardening mechanism. We know the typical uh, diagram we try to explain based on this one. So, austenite transfer to pearlite or bainite or maybe martensite here. Depend on the cooling rate, depend on the processing condition, depend on either we have diffusion in the transition or no diffusion. In reality, when we modify the composition, the shape of this curve will change. You can say when we have additional MN inside, we cannot only change the time for the transformation, also we can change the shape of the curve as well, due to different uh, transformation mechanisms inside, which are linked with the chemical composition change of the material. So, here we say, to summarize the transformations in, let's say, steels. So we start from the austenite, gamma phase, slow cooling produced pearlite. Okay, then moderate cooling rate, we get uh, bainite. Rapid cooling, we get uh, martensite, which is a single phase material. And this transformation is uh, diffusionless, very fast. And this material is normally is very brittle, very high hardness. That's why we need the annealing again to get the temperate, temperate martensite, which including alpha phase 
plus very small sized thermotide particles. So this table show you if you need a higher strength or higher hardness, go for this way based on the microstructure change. If you try to increase the ductility, you need to go to this way to get the spherodite direction. Now we're talking about the next topic, aluminum copper alloys. This is the aluminum copper phase diagram on the aluminum rich side. Okay, here is the, here is the position for aluminum. It's the temperature. So this is the region we call alpha phase. And this is the boundary between alpha phase and a two phase region, including alpha plus theta or theta prime phase or other phase. You may notice this curve, okay, you can treat it like the solubility of the carbon in alpha phase during cooling, the dramatic decrease. Also, we mark different phase in this region. You have GP0, theta double prime, theta prime, and theta phase in this region. In terms of the transformation, you can say, depend on the process and temperature. You start from alpha phase, if you pick up the process and temperature in this region, what you get is the theta phase. If the process and temperature is in this window, then you get the theta prime phase. And uh, alpha phase can transfer to theta double prime phase directly if the temperature for processing is in this window. GP0 is why you can get quickly because here is the time okay very short time you can get a gp zone if you pick up the process temperature at this level to be clear the final stabilizer structure in this phase diagram is a theta phase okay so finally thermal stabilizer structure in terms of free energy is a theta phase only but because the transition involves the diffusion, involves the kinetics, that's why you have the possibility to get all these different phase during the transition, start from alpha phase. Normally, we use this uh, how say, uh, program to prepare the aluminum copper alloys. Basically, you start from alpha, And then you get the materials low temperature. Now you just reheat materials go to high temperature. Okay, doesn't matter you start from theta or theta prime or the DP zone. You go to alpha zone, alpha alpha position. Then you hold it. When everything is alpha phase, then you quench quick cooling. Then you will get something we call GP zone structure, which is balanced by alpha one phase. Then you reheat this reheat these materials at T2 temperature. T2 temperature normally is below this curve, theta double prime curve. Hold for longer time, you will get the alpha two plus theta double prime phase mixture. Then, if you have these materials based on this structure, with time going you will finally transfer from theta double prime to theta prime to finally theta phase. As we said, the transformation can start from alpha 0 to alpha 1 plus GP0, low temperature 1, then can transfer to alpha 2 plus theta double prime, alpha 3 plus theta prime, finally theta phase. Theta is the first thermally stable, which is the stable structure in terms of the free energy. So check this figure, you can find GP0 has the higher free energy. Then second one is the theta double prime, theta prime, theta. So from GP0 to theta phase, you decrease the free energy of the different theta phase. 
all of this GP0 or theta phase, they have their balanced alpha phase because that's the two phase region. You can say the GP0 balanced with alpha one phase. Okay, theta double prime phase balanced with alpha two phase. Theta prime phase balanced with the alpha three phase. Theta phase balanced with the alpha four phase. So from this figure, you can see clearly from alpha one to alpha four, you decrease the copper concentration in the alpha phase system. So why we always emphasize this uh, different uh, phase from GP0 to theta double prime, theta prime, and theta phase? The reason is they have different mechanical property for aging reapplication. The alpha phase starts from the cubic structure. When they go to the GP0 structure, you have this copper local rich region inside. Then when you have the GP0 transfer to theta double prime phase, the structure is like this, tetragonal structure. But you can say the x, y direction, the lattice parameter exactly match the alpha phase matrix. C direction is doubled, but there is a distortion, so slightly shorter than two times of the C direction here. Overall, we say all sides they have the chemical bonding, chemical bonding connection with matrix. When you have this theta double prime phase transfer to theta prime phase, now you have this x y direction still match with the alpha matrix, same size in terms of the lattice parameter. However, the c direction lattice parameter now is 5.8, which is neither match c direction nor two c direction size as well. That's why you lost the chemical body connection along Z direction between theta prime phase and uh, matrix. So this will become weaker in terms of mechanical property. Then when you finally get this theta phase, you can say X, Y, Z direction. All of them have clear mismatch in terms of the lattice parameter compared to alpha matrix. Then, which means this theta phase clearly separated from the matrix. There is no chemical bonding connection directly linked with the matrix. That's why this one will have the low stress, poor mechanical property. So, figure on the right side, they show you how about their microstructure change. So, this is the GP0 structure. This is the theta double prime phase. You can see they are work as a smaller particle size, the shape, but with a clear distortion and with the strong chemical bonding connection along X, Y, Z, three directions. This one talking about the structure now transferred to the theta prime phase. The particle size getting bigger and uh, then there's less, less contribution to the stress. Also, in this structure, you lost the chemical bonding connection along this direction. Then finally, you get the theta phase, which is stabilized the structure in terms of the free energy change. But this stable structure is not the perfect structure in terms of stress, mechanical property. The reason is in this structure, the connection between theta phase and the matrix is very weak, and there are only a few particles like the theta in the structure. They have the very poor contribution to block dislocations to move. That's the reason you get the has the minimized mechanical stress. So to summarize the effect on different phase, uh, to emphasize the effect of different phase on the mechanical property in aluminum copper lines, you can say this is the stress or hardness change with the time. 
during the process. So you get this uh, GP0, then theta double prime phase, the theta prime phase, the theta phase. Okay. So clearly the theta double prime phase gives you the position for the highest hardness of stress. The reason is, as we discussed before, theta double prime phase has the advantage in terms of the chemical bonding connection along x, y, z, three directions. Also, they have the very clear distortion compared to the matrix. Also, they have the smaller particle size. They work as a smaller size, the part smaller sized particles. That's the reason you have this peak position. So this region we call over-aging. So if you have the process in longer time, you overcook the materials, that's why the stress or hardness is getting poor. This uh, hardening mechanism uh, we call precipitation hardening mechanism. So typically it's for the aluminum, copper, and also other alloys. So these are the materials quite important for the aerospace application because the aluminum has a very lower density. But now you have the mechanical stress dramatically increased compared to pure aluminum because it's hardening mechanism. So the basic science is clear, but for engineering application, still you need to do further work. Depends on the uh, what is the property you need. You can pick up the processing temperature either lower, like 1 to 1 degree C, or higher temperature like 260. 260 degrees C. You will get this peak position depends on different time. So lower temperature, the peak position here you get a longer time. But the stress value is higher. If you try to save the time, save the cost, you can pick up the higher processing temperature. But now you can get the transformation to achieve theta double prime phase position quickly but the overall stress is lower in this red curve compared to the orange color curve. Then this is trying try to say always, when you get the higher stress or hardness, you decrease the ductility. So this is the question for PBL. And basically, we ask you to use the aluminum copper phase diagram and think about the necessary heat treatment details in order to control the microstructure, get the better mechanical property for application. Okay, so clearly, you also need to talk about the parameters for the processing and the link with the structure change. And that's all for today. Bye.